So this is lesson 5.5, five, which is function operations. Our essential question is how do you combine, multiply, divide, and compose functions, and how do you find the domain of the resulting function? So our first example, we're going to find f plus g of x. So it gives us that f of x is 3x plus 4, and g of x is x squared minus 5x plus 2. So if we're finding f plus g of x, that just means we're going to add the two functions together. So we're going to take 3x plus 4 plus x squared minus 5x plus 2. And if we combine like terms in there, we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 6. Okay, and then it says, how do you define the difference, f minus g? So this would be f minus g of x. So this one you have to be a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to be a little bit careful because um, when you're subtracting, you know you need to subtract that entire second um, function. So you need to make sure you distribute or take each term at a time and make sure you're applying the negative, the minus to it. So if I go for my x squared first, it'd be negative x squared. Then I would take 3x minus negative 5x, that'd be plus 8x. And 4 minus 2 would be 2. So that's how we add and subtract functions. Next one is how do we multiply? So it says the demand D in units sold for a company's new brand of cell phone at price X in dollars is D of X equals 5,000 minus 10X. What is the company's expected revenue from cell phone sales in terms of the price X? So we're saying that revenue is equal to price times demand of X. So our price is, so P of X is equal to X and our demand D of X is over here, this equation right there, okay? So we're gonna say that the revenue would be equal to X times 5,000 minus 10X. So we need to distribute the x, so we would get 5,000x minus 10x squared. So that is how we multiply functions. The next step is how do you define the quotient f divided by g of the functions f of x equals x minus 7 and g of x equals 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. So we're finding f divided by g of x. So that's going to be x minus 7 divided by 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. And then um, sometimes with these you won't be able to simplify and sometimes you will. On this one I would always try to factor if you could. So I'm going to go over here and factor 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. 2 times negative 7 would be negative 14. So that would be negative 14 and 1. So 2x squared minus 14x plus x minus 7. Group those terms. Take out a 2x. And take out a 1. So that gives me 2x plus 1 and x minus 7. So then I can put those back in, so here, we'll just keep going with this. So we'll say x minus 7 over 2x plus 1 and x minus 7. So we can cancel the x minus 7s, so our result would be 1 over 2x plus 1. And then with domain, with when you're dividing functions, you just need to be aware that um, even though your two original functions were all real numbers, as soon as you put it into a division problem, just like when we were doing um, rational functions in chapter four, we can't divide by a negative. So we would say that x cannot be seven, even though we canceled those out, and x cannot be negative one half. So that's our domain. Okay, the next thing is composition of functions. So if we say f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus 1, we're going to find two values. We're going to find f of g of 3, and then we're going to find f of g of x. 
So what this is, is this is not multiplying, okay? You can see it written like there's multiple ways to write it. We could say f of g of x like that. Or you can write it as f, and this is not an o, or it's not a multiplication sign. It's a little dot that's hollow. f, and we say f of g of x, okay? So for this first one, we're finding f of g of 3. So you can see they color-coded it, which is kind of nice. So what we're going to first do is find what is g of 3. So if I find g of 3, I'm going to plug 3 in for x. So 3 plus 1, that's going to give me 4. So we know that g of 3 is equal to 4. So now what we're doing is we're kind of working our way out. So if I find f of g of 3, instead of g of 3, I can write that as f of 4, which is just... 4 squared, which is 16. So when you have a number, you work from the inside function out, and you take the result of the inside function and plug it into your outer function. Now, the second example is what do we do if it's not a number? It's just x. So we're going to use that same idea. We're going to take g of x, which we know is x plus 1. So we're really finding f of x plus 1. So what that means is everywhere that there's an x in f of x, we're going to substitute in x plus 1. So that would be x plus 1 squared, which we can simplify to x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so our last example, so that you can see this is written in a different way. It's asking us the rule for the composition of f of g of x, and we are given two different functions. So we have f of x equals the square root of x plus 7, and g of x equals 2x minus 5. So again, I'm going to take g of x, so the one that's closest to x, that's the one that you're going to plug into the one that's further away. So I'm going to take the 2x minus 5, and I'm going to plug it in for that x right there. So f of g of x would be equal to the square root of 2x minus 5 plus 7. And I can simplify that, so the negative 5 and the 7 I can combine, so this would be 2x plus 2. Okay, second example, what's the rule for f of g of x? So again, we're going to take 4 minus x, which is g of x, and we're going to plug it in, but notice there's multiple x's um, on this one, so we have to plug it in everywhere there's an x. So we're going to plug it in both of those spots. So we can say f of g of x is equal to 4 minus x squared plus 4 minus x plus 2. So then if we simplify, so if we FOIL out that, that'd be, oops, it'd be 16 minus 8x plus x squared plus 4 minus x plus 2. And then if we combine like terms, we get x squared minus 9x plus 22. Okay, so that is combinations and composition.